Mm-hmm. All right, three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Writer's Realm podcast, and thanks for joining us on the epic adventure we call writing. We're your hosts. Holly Rebilliard. Austin Matthews. And Bob Adato. And today we're going to talk about audiobooks with Elizabeth Legend. Like, oh my God, I'll just stop. <laughs> I'll just start over. Uh, is it Lagerly? Legendary. Leisurely. Le- Leisurely. That's easy. Leisurely. Okay. Leisurely. Leisurely. Yeah. Leisurely. I'm going to start over. All of a sudden I got there. Oh, no, that's like, hilarious. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody Le- can pronounce my last name. So Leg- it's like- <laughs> Leisurely. Leisurely. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> okay, sorry, sorry. You guys, we're, this is perfect. I love our group here. All right. <sighs> sorry, sorry. Three, two, one. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Writer's Realm podcast, and thanks for joining us on the epic adventure we call writing. We're your hosts. Holly Rebilliard. Austin Matthews and Bob Adato. And today we're going to talk about audiobooks with Elizabeth Lajeli, who is a voice artist. Welcome to the show, <laughs> Elizabeth. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, tell us about yourself. Um, so I am a voice artist. I was born in Paris, France. I was raised there. I moved to San Francisco eight years ago. And um, that's where I discovered the world of improv and audiobooks yeah. and voice acting. Yeah. And since then, I've recorded uh, almost 110 titles. And um, I work a lot with um, publishers, indie authors, um, all genres, but I really love fantasy. That's kind of my favorite mm-hmm. genre <laughs> and um anything to do with france i love you know when... <laughs> and bread so, and bread so what is it about <laughs> what is it about fantasy that makes it your favorite like your favorite to read or favorite to record or i think it, it's always been my favorite to read mm-hmm. and um like growing up since i had the french like at school i had all like the french classics and so fantasy was like really my escape. I would come to mm. the um, California every summer to visit my family. And um, I would just like raid Barnes and Nobles and, <laughs> you know, just, yeah, read everything, stay up way past my bedtime and everything. <laughs> and it was always fantasy for some reason. And so I think for me, English, the English language for me is like my fantasy language. So it's mm. like, um, yeah, and that's what I love to to work on. Nice. Uh, how can we find you, Elizabeth? So I have my website, storiesbyelli.com, S-T-O-R-I-E-S-E-L-I.com, and also on the socials at Ellie Voice Actor. Okay. And um, I also have, I also work under a pseudonym uh, for my, like, darker fantasy uh romanticy romantica stuff oh. and that's luna ray <laughs> luna ray okay wow yes. oh you're very busy i think uh, <laughs> uh, yeah and, it's good <laughs> yeah now i found you on uh, tiktok um you were there yes. uh, and i was um i was looking for an audio i'm sorry a voice artist um, yep. I wanted to produce an audio book, um, and, and I had all these people, um, because I don't know if you know, I, I can't, I don't remember the name of the, the actual, uh, website, but when you, when, when you're ready to start an audio book and you, you want to hire one, you'll get all these additions. And I had about 15 or 16, and I'm just listening to them and, you know, most of them are great. Wow. They're, they're okay. And then, um, just uh, by a chance, like I was just flipping through, uh TikTok and I found Ellie and she and I'm like huh I kind of like the way she sounds uh you know so I messaged her do you mind hey I'm setting that's up that's right an you audiobook. messaged me yeah 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 <laughs> yeah and I go hey I'm setting up an audiobook you, you here's the link I think I think I sent you a link or we checked your emails or whatever and uh you're the one I picked I mean and it wasn't just me because it was just the way you said that line the very first line 
that um, that I gave uh, as a uh, as, as the audio test for. Uh, it was a great sample. Yeah, um, a sample. That's what I it was. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. That was a yeah. It had both characters and just like it was so atmospheric. Yeah. Like I yeah. I, I had chills when I read the first line. Oh, uh, like, thanks. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But it was, I, I tell you, I kid you not, it was absolutely stunningly perfect because all these other um, auditions weren't really getting, they're, it was just, they're just reading it. I don't know how to explain it. But Ellie mm -hmm. gets it, gets a hold of it. And I was like, oh my gosh. I was like in the story immediately. And I shared that with, my daughter and her uh fiance at the time and i go hey just and i gave him like three or four samples like hey just pick your favorite one and both of them picked you like right right away so i thought <laughs> so i go okay good i'm not the only one then it's perfect yeah. but uh yeah she does fantastic work how long have you been doing this ellie so it's funny because i just looked on my audible titles and my first audiobook i, I recorded uh, came out seven years ago almost wow. wow so yeah it's uh yeah it took me it took me a while to kind of get into my stride and but you know it's I've been doing this full time for the past two to three years mm. um and yeah <laughs> but it's 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 yeah it's been it's been amazing I love I love being able to get inside an author's world and just like mm -hmm. immerse myself <laughs> so yeah. how did you get started with all of this um so when i first moved to san francisco um i got into improv and the improv scene is like full of voice actors <laughs> <laughs> um and so a lot of people were doing you know voice acting my my first improv teacher she actually had a profile on acx and she told me like hey if you're interested you should set up a profile and you know um it was also the time that audible was doing all their ads and the you know muni like the subway and everything and i've always loved reading out loud like it's something that i've done my whole life and acting and everything and so i was like I feel like the universe is telling me something. Maybe I should. <laughs> so, so I went and set up my profile, and then my first author reached out to me, just like she listened to one of my samples. Um, I'd done a couple. I kind of like tested the waters with um, some, you know, websites like LibriVox that do mm -hmm. um, public domain work, yeah. and it's all volunteer based. And so I kind of, you know, tested it out there and. So yeah, that's how I I got my first book, and and then I was like, well, I should probably get some more full, formal training, and so <laughs> that's what I did. <laughs> um, and coached a ton, still coach today, uh, and wow. you know, there's always something to learn and grow, and I actually loved. I sorry, I listen. I'm going off on a tangent, but I no, love no, no, the what we do here. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> the yesterday or whatever the. The most recent podcast episode that you posted uh -huh. um that was with the writing coach yeah was, and she uh, was saying how you know writing is all about like mindset right. and the more i do like this job and the more i'm like this job is all about like mindset because mm -hmm. like you can be very good technically you can have the best equipment but oh my gosh if you can't get into that flow and just mm -hmm. like it can be like the most <laughs> torturous yeah. process possible because <laughs> we are just like in this little booth right. you know mm -hmm. for you know days at a time um it's yeah I feel like that yeah. must be so challenging because I know for us like at least we can you know go right outside or you know right in a coffee shop or right somewhere but mm -hmm. it's not like you can just up and take your studio somewhere with you right mm -hmm. like you're very mm -hmm. very limited exactly. and you have to block out all the outside sound and things like that mm -hmm. yeah so I, I am fortunate that I have this, um, a window in my booth and I can see outside <laughs> from that <laughs> window. So that helps a lot. Um, but yeah, that's also why I like the, the prep part of the, the process, because that's when I get to go anywhere I want and I can just grab my book and just like read. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, but I also like my booth. Like, I don't know, I'm kind of a hermit. So I really like going outdoors, but sometimes I just like being on my own and just like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how do you, how do you get started? Like, so you said that in the prep, in the prep stages, um, what is that, what does this process look like? Of creating an audiobook? Yeah. yeah. Um, so once the first step is getting the recordable manuscript from the author or publisher, um, and then, yeah, I will go and read the whole thing from start to finish and, you know, take notes as I go about like the different characters, um, possible accents that are in the story, um, make a quick summary of each chapter, um, you know, get a sense of the style and what, if I have any questions for the author, mm -hmm. um, pronunciations, like in fantasy, especially, <laughs> it's just like, yeah. oh my gosh, it can get gnarly. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> like, no, actually Tom is pronounced, you know, yeah. whatever, <laughs> Sophia in this case, it's like, okay. Um, <laughs> It's yeah. So I've I've learned the hard way that you you should check everything, like even the things that you think like no, that's obvious. Like mm -hmm. no, you check it with the other. <laughs> um. So so yeah. So that's the first step. That's the prep phase, and then, um, I will go into my booth. Usually record the first fifteen minutes of the audiobook or a selection of scenes you know, that all together make up like 15 minutes and um, get that approved by the author who will give me, you know, direction notes or like say, oh, you know, I was thinking more like this or this for this character. Um, I, I really like when I, in my prep process, like to have a casting, like in my, in my head, mm. like, I think that's one of the questions that I asked you, Bob. It's like, who would you cast if, you know? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Whenever actor, your book actress, will be turned into right. a movie. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Even, <laughs> yeah. A photo or, or I, I remember for one of the villains we were trying to figure out, you know, I think you said, does he sound like Bane, like from Batman? And I was yeah. Like, yeah, 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 yeah he's a little yeah. bit like in this direction, <laughs> but I mean, she was close, but, but, but yeah, so it's, it was really engaging and i was just so happy i was just so thrilled that that i could like be a part of it does that make sense like i already wrote it but then, <laughs> but then like you're including me like well how does this sound and, and how does she uh, act what's her like you said what's her character is she kind mm -hmm. of a hothead or is she like a you know so you can kind of put those own nuances and inflections into each character yeah, and it was fun yeah. that exchange of emails back and forth back and forth but yeah, she was fantastic oh, yeah. uh, working with, to, 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 you know, working with the, the audiobook. That's my favorite part of working with indie authors because we get that relationship. We all we don't always get that when we work through publishers because, mm -hmm. you know, they have to keep control of the information and whatever. Uh, but with indies, I can just like, <laughs> we can just talk for hours about the book. <laughs> and you guys have already done like, you know, that work basically like when you wrote the book you usually have those character sheets those those yeah. things so it's just like give them to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um i also love making like playlists you know um for like mm -hmm. and i remember like two steps from hell was like a big influence and right. like you told me you listened to that a lot while you were writing the book and right I still listen to it like yeah. whenever I hear it, I, I think about the you know coil and fangs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I never thought about that because like I definitely have like oh this character like this is their theme music so like I pick a band or like play make a playlist so that's interesting that like I mean it makes sense that it would help you as well. Yeah, I mean different people have different ways of like mm -hmm. you know absorbing the content, but for me, yeah, music really is super helpful. Yeah. I can see um, that really helping with like that attitude for whatever the character is. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I know we, a G. <laughs> I, I agree totally. I know we talked about this in another podcast, but I have a playlist for my main character in the book that I'm writing right now. And she's like kind of really deep assassin vibes, like independent, doesn't need anybody. She's out there like killing these crazy creatures from <laughs> hell. 
and she has this whole like totally total badass like playlist and I listen to it when I go to the gym but every once in a while I'll listen to it when I'm driving and like people are like I think looking at me like oh my gosh is like is she on her way to go kill somebody like what is this girl doing <laughs> like, and I'm just like mm, like I've got like I'm in the zone <laughs> like, but it's perfect because it totally gets me in the mindset like now when I go to the gym and I'm mm -hmm. working out I'm like immediately in the mindset of this character and I'm like all right I can go right now this is perfect yeah yeah no it's 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 a really useful way to think about like just to build out the world like and you said you used a lot of like you know candles or like scents like I I'm trying to like see how we can I can incorporate that more in my work as well. Like it's harder. <laughs> it's like yeah. using more senses. It's like mm. yeah, engaging everything to get into the world. Mm. Um, so yeah, so that's the first step. You know, the big um, the two first steps: the prep, the first fifteen minutes. Um, after that has been um, val approved, then I go and record the full audiobook and. Typically, a 10-hour book will take me about a week to narrate. Um, I try to get like two finished hours done every day, and that'll take me, you know, maybe four to five hours if I'm on a good day or any. <laughs> it just goes up from there. So, <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and then, um, you know, I work with... Um, professional sound engineers mm -hmm. um so i get the book is proofed the audiobook is proofed edited and mastered to meet like the distribution platforms specifications and uh yeah and then you get a shiny new audiobook that's uh yeah. ready to delight your fans <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was so fun just listening like mm -hmm. it's one step closer to I mean, I mean, obviously, I don't know about you guys, but I'm, I'm probably 100% right. Like when you're writing your books, you're like, this has got to be a Netflix series or this has got to be, <laughs> I have got to get a phone call from Steven Spielberg. But, yep. <laughs> but if you were to get Ellie to work on your book, it is, it is just like that, you know? Now, here's a, here's a interesting thing though, Ellie, here, that, because I've heard, there's kind of, I feel like there's a couple of different audiobooks for the ones that are, are narrative which you do and then there's like kind of like a drama like they include music, oh yeah the graphic audio. so mm -hmm. do you do either of those or or just you just do uh just the simple ones the audio yeah so i um i mostly do um the like traditional narrations and those can be like you know single um single narrator or like a dual narration so where it's mm -hmm. like where you alternate like with the chapters um and yeah the graphic audio style um i i'm trying to think no i haven't done that yet okay but um yeah i'd love to try yeah. <laughs> there you go bob yeah <laughs> no i have no idea I don't, that's a totally different <laughs> I barely survive with marketing is, and so nothing. <laughs> it's, I I feel like it's a different genre. Like you know, it's not it's not really an audiobook anymore. Mm -hmm. I used to uh, when growing up, I listened to the BBC a lot, and they had a lot of audio dramas. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved those. Like yeah. they they were they're fantastic. Um, but. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's because I became like because I chose this career path and I'm doing all these audiobooks and it's so quiet and intimate. But now it feels more jarring when I listen to those like mm. full <laughs> cast with like yeah. explosions going off everywhere. And it's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, like it's <laughs> a big deal. Yeah. It's like crazy. Yeah. I thought yeah. I was gonna absolutely love it, right? Because again, like I, I listen to or I read a lot of romantic and stuff, and I was like, oh, you know, you always imagine hearing these like really great masculine or feminine voices. Um, and I listened to one of these one time and I was like, this, I hate this. Like I, <laughs> it, it was just like, I love when they just will occasionally put like a more masculine voice in there that I really, mm -hmm. really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Um, but when it's like 
back and forth and back and forth. And there's all this stuff going on. I feel like it just completely throws me right yeah. out of the story. I agree. And I'm just so like focused, like hyper focused almost on trying to figure out which character's voice is saying what. <laughs> right. That I just it's so confusing it's for me. I don't know much. why, but I yeah, for me, I was just like, this is not my cup of tea. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna disagree. Cause <laughs> I mean, I definitely, you are. well, <laughs> here's the thing. you can find things that are good and bad on both fronts. Um, so like, yeah, if it's got too many sound effects, like that definitely throws yeah. me out. But like, I do enjoy whenever like each character has a different voice. Um, and so mm. like some voice actors are definitely better at that than others. And so mm -hmm. I think it goes a long way where it's like, hey, there is a huge dynamic cast, like having a different actor makes sense. Or like, yeah. you know, an actor does like three or four voices, those kind of things, instead yeah. of having to do. 30 different voices. Um, so there's definitely pros and cons to it, depending on the audiobook. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Now, yeah. let's talk about your studio, because I looked into this for a hot second, okay? A hot second, I was like, what if I tried to do this myself with two female characters? All right. Anyways, I know it's a dumb idea, but, but they're like, yeah, just go in your closet, you know? And it's like kind of, it's like you're like a built-in sound booth if you get and then or you can hang i think i asked you uh like how do you keep it quiet in there and you're like at the time this looks like a really kind of a new i've uh, moved up studio. in the world yeah yeah, that's <laughs> what <it> looks like. <laughs> yeah for for those listening it's definitely like that looks like soundproof material inside like an actual yeah sound i'm gonna booth. try to like give yeah. a little tour i don't know but yeah, um that's okay yeah, yeah it looks like a professional job whereas I think, did you used to hang, you said you hang, you hung um, blankets, uh, yes. right? So I had acoustic blankets. I'm trying to acoustic remember. Blankets, uh, wow. Yeah, they're like really heavy. Oh my um, gosh. I mean, I'm going to like, the dirty little secret of audiobooks is that like, this is great, mm -hmm. mostly for the looks, but oh. honestly, like a walk-in closet with a lot of clothes will do, you know, if it's quiet, uh, it'll yeah. be just as good like <laughs> nice. yeah. Yeah, well, um and but don't free. tell anyone please. <laughs> yeah. yeah well like one of my favorite um like podcasts is called the magnus archives and it's you know a radio drama essentially but they i think they recorded their first season just like all of them in a room with a blanket over the cast and they're all <laughs> with one microphone oh really yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah i it's um you know it's it's like, what's nice is that, you know, this booth stays relatively the same. Like, you know, maybe probably in a walk-in closet, you're using it for other stuff. So, right. <laughs> like, where did all my, like, cashmere sweaters go? Like, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for my soundproof. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Nice. It's, uh... So, if somebody's yeah. trying to start out, in other words, you don't have to go run yeah. out some crazy booth. You could just... No. Closet. no and i yeah yeah okay yeah you can you can figure there's so many ways to do this yeah. you know and i mean if you're in a quiet environment to begin with i mean that's the most important thing mm -hmm. uh because if you're dealing with a lot of like traffic and sirens and whatever it's going to be really hard to yeah. get some decent sound but or yeah. my two kids at home. Yeah. And the, the, you know, stomping feet. <laughs> so. yeah. mm -hmm. Bob's cat. Yeah, I have a cat. <laughs> yeah, no, the purr, there's yeah. no deep purr. Like, yeah. no, that doesn't like. No <laughs> <deep purr. laughs> yeah, the dogs. Oh, yeah. I have to tell you. Okay, so this is my tangent about noise, okay, <laughs> and animals. So I'm sitting here earlier today. Um, I think I was playing World of Warcraft, of course. Why would I want to write a book on this trip, like some games? <laughs> but uh, I heard like somebody rapping on the window, like really hard, and the dogs start going crazy. And I'm like, "What the heck? Like, who's knocking on the window? That's bizarre." And I go look, and there's nobody there. Um, I'm upstairs, <laughs> and I can look at. Yeah, I can go around the corner, and look out, and they're going nuts. And I was like, "God, that was yeah." In a way, it was a little spooky. Like, what the heck is that? So I come back, and again, pop, 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 pop. I mean, it was like really hard, real fast, like what the heck and i go back out and i look up this time instead of down we have this window that's kind of up at the front on top of the house and there's two crows up there <laughs> and they're just hanging out like looking in the house <laughs> like, <laughs> what are you guys doing anybody <laughs> so, in <laughs> and they kept, oh my they kept gosh. like knocking on the window 
<laughs> driving the dogs crazy and i'm like you gotta be kidding me like <laughs> how would you get around this but anyway that was oh my, my story gosh. the end no i love i love it we um you know and i mean i'm sure other cities have this but we have a lot of crows and like you know in san francisco mm -hmm. and they always move um around sunset and sunrise like they'll change they'll go to mm -hmm. the other end of the city oh, and okay. usually they'll fly over our neighborhood or sometimes a little further down um and once they stop like on our roof like the whole gang was up there and it was mm -hmm. wild like wow. <laughs> it was the same thing just like you could yeah. hear there were like a ton of them and yeah. just like the little Footsteps. feet and just like oh the cawing and it was like wild yeah. <laughs> definitely could not record while they were doing yeah. that <laughs> yeah that's so before you do start recording do you have like a, a ritual or like a certain thing that you do to like get yourself ready to go in for like a recording session or is there like you know, I'm there's like so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> I made a reel about this. Um, <laughs> so um, I usually do um, my well. First, I first thing I do in the like when I wake up in the morning, I have to drink a lot of water because that's like the most important thing, hydration. And then um, I will go drop my kiddo off at school. And then on the way up, I will do my vocal warm ups in the car, which is super fun when you're at a stoplight and you're like doing those lip trills. I saw that. You <laughs> and people are that, just right? like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's That's really amazing. funny. <laughs> I tell you what, um, why don't you do some of that right now for us now? Just... <laughs> <laughs> Oops, I lost the connection. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, vocal warm-ups, um, I will try to do a couple, like, body warm-ups, you know, or, like, face massage, um, jaw release, stuff like that, and, and then, and then I go in and I start recording. Hmm. That is awesome. Yeah. Do you have any, like, inspirations that you either listen to or watch or... I don't know, just something to kind of help, like you're, like you're ready to, like you've done all the trills and everything. Mm -hmm. I don't know, is there anything else, like for me, the I, music, I, the music okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just listen to yeah. like a couple of minutes of that and then you're ready yeah. to go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What were you going to say? Oh, me? I like, I like uh, watching um, a lot of YouTube clips to get mm. like the the energy the uh, emotional energy or the emotional impact of a scene especially if i'm going to write something kind of heavy like i'm trying to get this right you know what i mean yeah so you're right yeah. it is it is a mindset yeah we gotta just kind mm -hmm. of be in the right frame of mind and it's easier to translate onto the page yeah, yeah. so i gotta ask is there anything you wish authors knew when they came to you that like they just were like something you want them to change or something like they were just already had prepared or, you know, things like that. Um, yeah, I, I actually thought about this. Um, there's, well, there's one thing like with the, the character tags, like he said, she said mm -hmm. that's, that can get like very tiring, like mm -hmm. for the listener when you just like hear like he said, she mm -hmm. said, but uh, so I would just say, like, if you're writing with audio in mind, is like finding creative ways to like give that, you know, point that focus onto the other person without saying he said, she said, like saying, oh, you know, like he moved to the other side of the room and then, you know, he just talks and you don't need to hear like he said or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that's that's one of the big ones. Um, uh, another one is like thinking about, um, well, I mean, the pronunciations again are like <laughs> give you a, a big list thing. up front. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, sometimes, you know, and sometimes the authors are like, I don't know, like, I just wrote this, like, I just come <laughs> up can with something. Said, yeah. yeah. Suddenly like, <laughs> it's Lovecraft and it can't be said out loud. And you're like, thanks. <laughs> um, 
And like recently I've been working on a romantic series and they're, you know, the different worlds are based on actual countries. And the author really wanted me to, um, you know, explore maybe those accents from those different countries. Um, and sometimes it lends itself to it. But sometimes, you know, if it's not really written in the text from the beginning, um, it's not consistent throughout the text, then it can quickly become very confusing. Mm -hmm. So like sometimes when the, the, you know, the main character is going to a different country and then, oh, they all have like super thick accents, yeah. but then they go to another country and like they can just talk with everybody and there's no reference to like you know, the fact that they speak a different language or whatever. So mm -hmm. it's just like, um, yeah, having clarity on what you want, what you're hearing while you're writing the story, mm -hmm. I think it's uh, reading out loud. Pro I think probably <laughs> one of the big things. Um, oh, and character names. That's another really um, important one because, oh my gosh, there are some names like Jack. It seems like it's so innocuous, but when you say Jack asked a couple times, <laughs> Jack asked, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just like, <laughs> <can't>, like <laughs> that's so again, great. saying those names out loud, it's like, yeah. <laughs> read it out loud and tell me, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. What you hear. Okay. Yeah. I, I have think... to say, Coil and Fang were pretty easy. Like, the, those were really good. <laughs> I, as soon as I came with the character name, I'm like, for the audiobook, this is going to be perfect. <laughs> I don't have to worry about this. <laughs> you began with the end in mind. Good yes. No, <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> no, I, I remember, um, gosh, this episode, I think was episodes ago. Oh, my goodness. Um, Austin, I think it was you who had mentioned that about, um, it was a great writing exercise where if you read through, you know, a chapter of your book and if you can't tell who's saying what without mm -hmm. having those tags, then you're doing something wrong, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Because you should be able to like the, the, you should be able to, for the most part, I think, you know, be able to read through it and, and know, mm -hmm. that, you know, who's saying what and without having to be like, oh, this person said this. Right. Mm -hmm. Between, um, you know, context and tone and all of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have a question though, actually. Uh, so I know for me, since I started writing, it's ruined a lot of books for me because granted every, everyone writes differently. You know, I, I understand this concept, but it does not stop this from happening to me. Um, now when I read books, I'm like, oh, like, why would they do this? Or, oh, I noticed that they did this yeah. weird. And, um, you know, I'll pick up on some things that a normal reader might not have. So now mm -hmm. when you, when you listen to audiobooks, are you like, oh man, why would they do this? Like, I done this, you know? like does it ruin them for you? <laughs> not, not really. Like, honestly, you get so immersed. Um, at least for me, like the book I'm recording is always like the most important book in the world. Like <laughs> I always feel like everybody needs to hear about this book. Like, so, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and then afterwards, then I'm like, oh, you know, it was like, oh, it was more like a light and fluffy thing. And then like, this is more intense. But yeah, no, I, I've i never had like, I definitely like see like, oh, there's, there's a loophole there or like there's something or like a typo. But I, yeah, it's always like the book I'm working on is always like the most important book there is in the world. So. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. I have a I have a question. What is um, going back to how you you said you spent two hours a day um, working, right? So or, so two hours, two finished hours, which mm -hmm. that's like a finished audio. Mm -hmm. So okay. that'll take me twice as long, uh, like okay, okay. minimum to do, like to get those two finished hours. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering. Like, let's say you had everything. You have the character names, pronunciations. Yeah the character voice as it were and uh like how long like well, yeah four to six hours let's say let's just pretend you're reading how how much of the book is is done like is that translated to pages like page one through 80 or something like that if i have four to six hours of booth time yeah 
Yeah, that's like two to three finished hours, okay. usually. Um, I also record in French, and I have to say that, like, the series I'm working on right now, it's in, like an urban fantasy, and I don't know, I'm I'm tearing through it really fast. I, I'm like, I hope I'm, like, doing a good job. <laughs> I'm like, whoa, I got through a lot. Um, but I, I've also worked with this author a lot. Like, this is the 14th book we've worked on okay, together. Well, so okay. I think maybe that also helps. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you work together very well. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So I have another wacky question. Um, Go. Let's just pretend you're given like a golden ticket. You can work on any book you want mm. throughout, oh, throughout history. Any book. Uh, and I'm sorry about that mic bump. Uh, uh, what would what, you pick? Oh, my gosh. Ah, any book I want. Hmm. I want to say Lord of the Rings. Oh, of course, yeah. But also, I've just started reading uh, Spider Light by Adrian Tchaikovsky, mm. which is kind of amazing. Like, it's kind of like Lord of the Rings, but that doesn't take itself too seriously. <laughs> uh, I kind of love it. I like that. I like maybe that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fun. yeah that's good um yeah i i just i love it when there's like you know really immersive worlds like i i mean look at my booth like i have a forest in my booth this is what <laughs> i i love to <laughs> it's a post, poster of a forest in her booth yeah yeah <laughs> fun. um it's yeah it's like a, a cloth thing <laughs> oh okay it's like like a banner yeah like a cloth banner yeah yeah it's a banner um so yeah, I just want to like get lost in a world and like, you know, preferably, I love it when there's like a, you know, like a, the character arc, like you go from like a, a young, you know, like young adult stuff, really, I really love it because when the, the character, the main character, like kind of finds himself or herself through like throughout their journey, um, yeah. It's magic stuff like that. I yeah. I just I just want it all. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. I totally yeah. agree. I've always been, even when I was younger, um, I was always really big into fantasy. And my mom, she actually used to read like all like the Anne Rice books, and she was really big into vampires and gargoyles and um, mm -hmm. like all the gothic stuff. Like she loved it. Uh, and so that's where I got a lot of it from because I'm like, oh, mom thinks it's cool. I think it's cool, right? <laughs> uh, and so I just have always been obsessed with it. And like, obviously now, even as I'm older, it's I'm I love that fantasy has made this like huge turn all of a sudden. Like it, fantasy is like the it thing right now. Sure. Yeah, I absolutely love that because I'm like, this is so good because there's just so <laughs> many good books coming out now yeah. all of a sudden. And I oh, yeah. I think a lot of it too, and I I truly believe this is that as we're starting to make the shift from traditional publishing to more indie publishing, we're going to be seeing so many more really, really great books because they're not just getting passed over by publishers. Right. right. And obviously mm -hmm. we know there are a lot of good books that get passed over. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, just, I'm, I'm totally like nerding out about the future of fantasy right now, because it's mm. going to be so great. <laughs> yeah. Not to be the odd one out again, but like, <laughs> it's funny. I grew up not liking fiction at all. Oh, okay. like, oh really? I loved wow. nonfiction. Like, nonfiction. if you could give me a science book or philosophy book, that was my jam. Like, I still, if you, like, look at my Audible account, it's, like, out of, out of 10 books that I go through, seven of them are going to be nonfiction, probably. Oh, okay. So, wow. it's just, I really enjoy the other side of things. So, but I think that lends to, like, whenever I read fantasy, like I want hard fantasy. I want there to be rules. I want it to be science. Mm. And like, I want to like try and figure out, oh, what are the loopholes? And like, is the author aware of these loopholes? Is it part of the story mm. or do they mess up? Um, so that's always fun for me. So yeah. it's just interesting to see how everybody's a little bit different and all that. Oh yeah. Yeah. I usually find when I'm working um, like on a, you know, a lot of fantasy audiobooks, then for my personal reading, I I need like nonfiction or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It's like a balance. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't. Yeah. I can't always do like the whole, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. 
one shot. I think it's... Like, like the nonfiction is, in is, is an escape from, from fantasy. Yeah. <laughs> to yeah. ground yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, really. <laughs> to really. ground yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 Escape from the escapism. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so have you done any nonfiction work or is, has it been all? I have done nonfiction work. Um, I actually recently had, uh, did a title with um, Tantor, um, an audiobook publisher. I usually get cast for like the, the French nonfiction books, like the, the um, wow. related to French history. Mm, and so wow. this one was about the, fashion revolution that took place during the french revolution and it was oh. fascinating yeah. um i actually discovered that um when i was in paris i actually used to work in marketing mm -hmm. and my office kind of had a view over this huge garden um just beautiful like in the center of paris and i when i was while i was you know prepping and recording the book i was like my gosh like this this person lived like in the same neighborhood I used to work in and she had this huge garden and there was that little aviary and oh my gosh that's what I saw every day from my office like mm. that is so, so that cool. Really cool yeah that was really cool <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's incredible. yeah and um that's also why I like the um, sorry I'm going back to and fiction Richard? but mm -hmm. I love um I also love like magical realism so like for example mm -hmm. You know, Coil and Fang was set in San Francisco, and I love like finding hmm. the spots that inspired like the different oh. you know scenes. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. uh, yeah. It just, I mean, for me, San Francisco is a magical city, so it's like, it <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's right. I, I remember that. I remember when you said, oh, yeah, I'm out of San Francisco. I'm like, oh, wait, well, you have to do the book now. because <laughs> <laughs> I just moved here on purpose just yeah. to get this book. <laughs> Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Such sacrifice. <laughs> Holly, did you have something? Um, it wasn't a question or anything. I was just going to say it, it fascinates me that you have the ability to you know, alter your voice and do all these um, different voices and accents and things like that. I can have no talent to do this whatsoever, <laughs> like not even the slightest little bit of talent. And it's really funny because my husband, he loves to use accents and if he'll just oh. do it. He'll, it, he knows it drives me nuts and he'll just for no reason, <laughs> no reason whatsoever. He'll just come in the door one day and suddenly he's got this like big Texan accent <laughs> And he'll do oh, it. He'll Texan do it. accent. That's the worst. <laughs> the, worst <laughs> the worst Texan accent, Austin. Uh, and he'll do it for like, it's like that big, like really heavy Southern right. cowboy uh -huh. from, you know, hundreds of years ago accent. Hundreds of years ago. <laughs> and he'll do it for I'm like. I'm pretty sure Texas minutes. hundreds of years ago was Mexico. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, yeah, obviously I don't write history, but. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> And it's like, it's so fascinating to me that people, you know, it, I think it's, it takes a real talent to just be able to have like those different sure. accents. And it's really funny because every once in a while I will try to do it. And so we like to do this thing where I'll be out in the yard, you know, d doing something and he'll like film me from the house and do like a voiceover in an accent. And so one day I thought it would be hilarious to do the same thing. And I did it on Snapchat. And this is like <laughs> going back like five years ago now. And two days ago, we're sitting in bed and I get this notification and it's like five years ago. And I'm like, what is this? <laughs> and I, I, we listen to it and it's this video of me doing this voiceover and it is so terrible. And I think <laughs> I was trying to do like an Australian accent or something. And there was like, we were just crying. We were laughing so hard. I go through like five different accents, but it's all supposed <laughs> to be one. <laughs> and it was so bad. That's funny. <laughs> but oh. I, I totally appreciate how hard it is. Mm -hmm. Like I, I yeah. can only imagine what it's like for you, like uh, that you can do it and do it so well. It was just fascinating to me. I think yeah. growing up with two languages definitely helps mm -hmm. and just having that curiosity for like, you know, I, I've also lived in Japan and um, Germany. So it's just, yeah, 
I guess <laughs> I have all these voices in my head and they have to come out some way. So <laughs> <laughs> audiobooks is the best solution I've found. <laughs> That's hilarious. I have all these voices in my head. <laughs> all right. Time to get our meds now. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, well, maybe to ground us back down. Uh, so I was curious. So like we talked about like how you got into to you know doing the voice acting and stuff. But like if somebody else was interested, say like I wanted to get into doing audiobooks, what would your suggestion be as far as like getting started and getting your foot in the door? I think the first step um would be to grab a book, any book, lock yourself into a closet and see how long you can go without going insane. <laughs> <laughs> no. that's hey, that's no. fair. yeah like if you can get through the whole book and you're like i love this then uh, move on proceed to the next step but wow. <laughs> that's, know, that's, like, uh, that's really great uh because like i have a degree in teaching and i remember we got to our last semester and we did our student teaching and it was the first time like a lot of us had ever been in a classroom with students and a lot of my classmates went, I hate this. I just <laughs> devoted three and a half years of college yeah. to this. And I don't yeah. want to do this for a single day. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, just doing it and seeing if you like it is a great, great bit of advice. Yeah. Smart. yeah. Very smart. So yeah. So once you've established that you do love this, <laughs> um, then the next step I would say is, yeah, setting yourself up. Um you know, finding your recording space um, and, yeah, just, you know, practicing, getting, like, training or, like, there's so many. I mean, when I started seven years ago, it was, like, a whole different playing field. Like, mm -hmm. it, there was, like, very little information out there. Um and now it's just like, you've got podcasts galore, you've got mm -hmm. YouTube channels, you've just, there's so much, like, you can just turn on, like, go on TikTok or Instagram, and you can watch narrators going live and, you know, recording live and everything. There's just so much, now you have to sort through the information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, f find, find somebody, uh, you know, a mentor who can, you trust and can guide you through the pitfalls and, um, you know, talking with an experienced narrator and kind of asking them what their process is and get you to help you get, get you set up is like probably a smart thing to do after afterwards. Um, now you said you yeah, were a I'm coach to, too, right? I, I, I haven't coached yet. I, I mean, I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I have a, couple people who've reached out to me okay. to ask me how I got started and everything. Um, I do help a lot of people with French pronunciation <laughs> 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 when they that comes up in their books. Right. Um, yeah. Like your last name. Because exactly. What, yes. what our listeners don't know is, <laughs> I started uh, introducing. You have her. to leave that in. <laughs> yeah. No, I, it's not I'm there. Back in. <laughs> but yeah, bad, Bob. You're gonna I put started back in. pronouncing your last. I'm like, wait a second. I all of a sudden I don't know how to pronounce my last. That's why I should have I should have cleared that before I started. <laughs> oh, you needed gosh. a you know a pronunciation yeah. guide. Hey, how yeah, exactly. You? I should. <laughs> <laughs> Holly, is your last name French? It's it's actually funny. Someone was asking me about this yesterday. Huh. Um, I think way back in the day it was. Um, Sounds very it's, French. It's, it's very <laughs> American now. Very American. <laughs> really? Yeah, I think at some point it probably was French. Huh. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> it is. I know because immediately it's really funny. So um, my maiden name was Danish. And so it was spelled like G-J. And that just threw everybody off. Like nobody <laughs> can pronounce my last name. They're like, "What? These do not go together." This, did you misspell this? Like, this is not right. Uh, so I was all excited because, like, when we got married, I was like, "This is gonna be awesome. Everyone's gonna know how to say my name finally." I'm so pumped. And it's like the first time someone was like, "Is that like 
Robillard or Robier <laughs> or yeah. you know, and I'm like, man, uh, <laughs> so, we pronounce it Robilliard, but I'm I'm sh- I'm sure that it is that's not how you're supposed to pronounce it. <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would say Robillard, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> if I tried that, it would sound like I was coughing up a hair. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear me say those things. <laughs> when you yeah. say it, it sounds really, really nice. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I um because like in fantasy, especially, there's so many um you know the trend is usually like well the it's all fae and they all speak with british accents oh really <laughs> and i've been like i've been like frontlining the the you know the movement like make them french like, so, like <laughs> no, i will I'm say tired of british that, characters <laughs> yeah i picture all my fae speaking with kiwi accents <laughs> because i feel like that's just like they're very like flippant and like hey like we're over here we're relaxing we're having some tea like don't even worry about it like we're not being imperialists we're just sitting right. here minding our own uh-huh. business. <laughs> i love that funny. i love that <laughs> yeah that's actually really interesting i feel like mine have they just are very american very <laughs> very like american okay. yeah. but like if there was like american royalty is kind of like how right. like the you know like the more like upper mid-Atlantic. crust, yeah, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. But that's like actually that. it's it's actually one of my pet peeves. Um, is that when like I'm reading a book and then they're like, "All right, now this one character has an accent, even though they're from the same place as everybody else." But then they're just like, <laughs> "He's gonna have a British accent." <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, 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 hey, so, yep. I think that's where my fear comes and Family from. guy, like he <laughs> just randomly Stewie. British. Yeah, that is funny. That's yeah, true. It's, it's so strange to me. <laughs> I mean, it is strange, but yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, again, it comes down to, um, you know, my own inability to be able to pronounce things any other way than I've learned to do it right. Um, and even I went to Germany recently, and I was learning some German before I went there, and. I felt so uncomfortable saying the words because I knew that they were coming out wrong. And like, even just saying like, hello, like it just felt like it was just so awkwardly weird the way that I was saying it. (laughs) It was such a struggle. So I think my career as a voice actress is over. (laughs) But um, yeah, that's, it's so weird. I don't know. So I never put any of it into my books because I just know it wouldn't be authentic. Mm. I love that. Yeah, you're just, yeah, being true to your, like, you're not trying to be more than, like, you know, right. what you know. So it's like, I love that. Um, I am Canadian, though, so maybe I'll throw an A in there every once in a while. We'll see what happens. <laughs> That's a great All way the to characters end are Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I love that. Yeah, there's just so many cool, you know so many cool accents and so many cool um you know as long as it's done like authentically then it's it's great but if it you don't need to do it like it it, the story shouldn't become about the accents Mm -hmm. pretty much like Mm -hmm. you're still trying to tell the story and um sometimes like no no we (laughs) let's just keep it simple so that listeners can stay in the story and not just be like hmm yeah. I, was, I think they're trying to go for german but that's mm-hmm. not really it doesn't sound really good you know? yeah. it's like <laughs> leave distracts from the <laughs> so if yeah. you're out somewhere because you practice practice and you use so many accents um if you're out somewhere and someone's talking to you in accent in an accent do you ever catch yourself like just kind of picking up oh, on it a little totally. bit <laughs> totally oh my gosh that's why like covid was like a curse and a blessing because we had <laughs> those masks on and i could just like while people were talking i could just like repeat under my mask and do whatever i wanted. <laughs> <laughs> awesome um, yeah yeah <laughs> no and then like you know i'm out in a crowd and like somebody will be talking in a certain way and i'm just like Hmm, which you know which character could i use this person mm-hmm. for it's like <laughs> wow. like i need to use that like that's an interesting like he always speaks out of the corner of his mouth i'm gonna steal that like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
So do yeah, you do you ever have like um because obviously every book is different and we all kind of envision our characters a certain way. Is there ever cases where you just need like a generic character or like for example the narrator um in a in a novel do you for all of the novels you do kind of keep the same narrator or it it changes it always changes yeah, it totally changes it's because you um yeah like my goal is to like convey the author's intent and that changes with each book so it's always like i of course i have like a certain vocal print and that's mm -hmm. you're gonna tell like over across the different audiobooks I do um but I do try to inject like the energy that the author is trying to you know has infused in the words um yeah so that that that'll change and um and also like yeah there's no really generic characters because I feel I mm -hmm. I rely a lot a lot on like um, body posture and like facial expressions to get into my characters um, that's kind of like my anchor it's like oh this person speaks from like the forehead or this person speaks from here and or this one always speaks from the you know corner of his mouth or like this one speaks from the belly you know this <laughs> it's um that's how I ground my characters and um yeah and so i i love it when the authors are very like you know they give me a lot of material in the text it's like and it's not just like oh you know he was blonde and blue-eyed it's like you know he smelled like resin and uh whiskey aged whiskey and uh i think one of my <laughs> I, know, like, I, I think one of my well it can also go too far because one of the characters, it was a fake character, and he was like, he spoke in a gravelly yet feather light way or something mm. like that. And I was like, mm. okay, so you're just going <laughs> to you know, my mind, my brain just exploded. Like, <laughs> yeah. Just do two voiceovers and lay them over each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what I ended up doing. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> really mess with the people <laughs> yeah 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 I feel like that's that's got to be one of the things I think that writers really struggle with as well is getting those expressions just right you mm -hmm. know and because it's you know I caught myself doing it there's a lot of like eye rolling or um you know like mm. there's certain traits that we oh yeah constantly lean on and so yeah. it's we, I feel like we must do the same thing when it comes to describing voices, right? Because yeah. we're like, either they said it was barely a whisper or their voice yeah. was low. Um, and I'm sure like that tells you how, how to say it, but not like how it's being said, I would think. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I think the most helpful uh, descriptions are not necessarily about the vocal print, because again, you can get the gravelly feather light voice, which, <laughs> <laughs> but the most helpful ones are just ones that describe like, what is this person about? Like what's going on in their mind? Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when you focus more on the energy of the character and what's there, um, one thing I learned in, um, it was a improv character workshop and like, you know, how to find those characters like really quickly, because when you're improvising, it's just like, <laughs> you don't have a script. So, <laughs> yeah. um, and the teacher was telling us to, um, you know, mash up two adjectives. Like she is snootily charming or something like that, you know, and just like have an adverb, an adjective and kind of use that as your anchor for, and I kind of do that for every character now. Um, and I find it very helpful. Just like he is grumpily um, optimistic or something like that, you know, it's just, <laughs> and that's more helpful. I find, you know, like I can, I can do something with that because I kind of, yeah, connect with the, that energy. Yeah. It's a little bit more to embody that. Exactly. Is of you know yeah. description of a voice yeah yeah because i'm never going to be able to do a gravelly voice anyway mm -hmm. like <laughs> I, <laughs> it won't work like <laughs> growl the whole time <laughs> yeah <exactly. laughs> i think that's a great exercise as well um 
probably something that everyone could really could use every once in a while is just really getting into those like those characters mindsets in between in between what they're saying um and just trying like I get caught up myself sometimes when I'm doing a lot of heavy heavy dialogue and it's like you forget that there's still supposed to be things happening inside of their these characters brains while they're having Mm -hmm. this dialogue or while they're listening um and that's how they get those expressions right because just because you know the granted the words might escalate the situation but also your character is mentally escalating somehow the Um, inner monologue yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 because you do have that dual like what they present on the outside and what's going on inside so Mm -hmm. yeah it's this is super helpful like this is (laughs) i mean it's just incredible i love listening to you ellie i mean you could just um i hope you know, for our listeners, they're like, you got, you got like a, like an hour long sample. Of what uh, <laughs> she's got a very, very pleasant voice. And yeah, he did. You took care of my British accent. So there's my cat. Uh, the, yeah. But um, I, lo- I love. Yeah. Yeah. You took care of British. accent. I mean, it was like just absolutely brilliant. Um, but you, this, this world of, of voice artistry is just incredible kind of like holly said yeah no, I'll, I'll stick to tapping away at the keyboards because like it's, just, <laughs> it's incredible i just had i no mean idea. that for me that's like where the magic like you guys are wizards because like it's like where do these words come from like <laughs> i don't know they just show up it's mm-hmm. they just show up that's yeah <laughs> the characters show up and that's then we amazing. have to name them yeah <laughs> And then they go and there's <laughs> Yeah, we have to give them really hard names though. Like yeah. we have to make sure that we give them the hardest names to pronounce ever. Right. So. Yeah. One consonant, all everything else is yeah. No vowels. Yeah. No <laughs> well, all right. Well now it's time for our time for don'ts. Um don't do this. Is what we? Uh, what should we call this? We don't have a name for it. The segment. Don't do I don't this. Know, every segment. time we go to int- introduce it, it reminds me of Veggie Tales with uh, silly songs with Larry. Oh really? Part of the show where Larry comes out and sings a silly song. I it's don't like know. this is the part of the show where we come out and tell you what not to do. <laughs> yeah, was this part of the tell? Yeah, I wish we could do like yeah, a little background music or something. Um, well, don't do one this. day. Yeah. <laughs> right. So who's got a dump? Yeah. If nobody else does, I can go ahead and go. All right. Go ahead. Austin. Um, it's changed since I said I had one at the beginning. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to say that don't feel like these things only apply if you are planning to do an audio book. Like you can still go through and do a lot of these things. Like know how you should be pronouncing your character's names and those yeah. kind of things. And like sure. read your, your chapters out loud in order to get a feel of the tone. Because it, it takes it out of the the familiar where you're just writing and looking at it over and over again. And it puts it in this new sort of sensory experience and allows you to really get a different perspective on it um, in a fresh way that you just don't as an author, just by doing another edit. So that would be my, my don't is don't think that this is limited to this part of the process. It's part of a overall process. That's exactly what I was going to say. No. (laughs) (laughs) Gosh darn it. <laughs> I would say, or only from my personal experience, um, don't give up looking for your audio uh, voice artist. Because um, like I said, you're going to get a lot of uh, people auditioning um, and they're going to sound great, but just give it, just wait, be patient. And maybe even, I mean, I have to say try TikTok because I had, I had, I was just on TikTok for uh, cooking or something <laughs> else and then ellie popped up and i'm like whoa wait a second like, <laughs> uh, so you never thank know thank you so algorithm <laughs> yes <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah so don't don't just jump on and like i said i am not kidding it was up between 13 and 15 before i found ellie 13 and 15 auditions wow. so don't just go well i'll just i'll just pick one um because this is going to be your baby uh, if it if it isn't already um, our first, especially our first book, you know, our, our book should be our treasure 
and we want the very best. And uh, I will say Ellie did a fantastic, fantastic job. So I know it's in good hands. Um, but that's what you want. You, you don't want to just like, all right, let's just, I'll just put you to eating meeny, miny, mo kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> so be patient. Um, I will go. And mine's kind of a long-winded two-parter, I guess, or <laughs> a don't and an explanation for it. Um, I will say, even though, like I said, I'm terrible at doing voices and accents and things like that, don't be afraid when you're going through your book and you're you know, in your editing phases or things like that, don't be afraid to make those voices that you envision for your character because you might feel like they actually, mm -hmm. you know, even though this is how you, in your mind, you think that that's how you want your character. When you, when it actually is said out loud, you might find that it actually doesn't suit your character. Mm, um, with that being said, I found out recently that there's a book called The Terminalist by Jack Carr. And he wrote this book so it's also a tv show so it's an amazon tv show and chris pratt actually plays the main character and i thought that was really cool and then i found out when i went through and i read the book and i listened to the audiobook and it turns out that jack carr when he was writing this book actually envisioned chris pratt playing this wow. character wow. and so his entire personality is built into this book <laughs> wow. and i think that that's that, like, amazing and it makes a huge like you can even when you're just reading the book you're like that's chris pratt that is, <laughs> that, is that right there that is chris this i can this is his voice this is his like mindset this is chris 100 percent. Right. and i think that that really says a lot as an author like to be able to actually get that much of an impact um behind your character like that's huge mm -hmm. and you know, it just comes down to just really knowing your characters, I think, and knowing exactly what you think that make sure that they're exactly what you expect them to be, I guess. And you can only do that by trying it out. So that's all I got. That's good. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Love it. All right, Lee, what do you yeah. got for us? The expert. Oh, I, I get a don't too. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we told you uh, this section was coming. We didn't tell you you had to do one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm just I'm like, <laughs> relaxing oh, yeah. now. Yeah, we're not uh, the experts out here, but we're all yeah. still telling people not to do one. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're like the last people that should be giving advice on this, but here we are. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, let's see. Can I do a do? <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm not going to say no. <laughs> I mean, I mean, <laughs> um, I mean, it relates to what you guys have already said. Um, you know, take your time with the audiobook process and listen. Um, I, I think honestly, like going on social media is a great way to find like, you know, voices that resonate with you and, um, Yeah, just just take your time. There's no there's no rush to come out with the audiobook and mm -hmm. um it yeah, the more thought and um sorry, my brain is becoming very tired. Right oh, now. sorry. Hey, no, I get it. <laughs> but hey, um, that's, a, that's a don't yeah. don't rush it. Yeah. Don't rush yeah. it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Something else that we didn't even mention, but now that I think about it, um, for anyone who is actually going to be tradi traditionally publishing, make sure that you pay attention to your contracts because mm. it's yes. it's completely possible that That's you could really lose, <laughs> lose the rights to your own audiobook yes. um, in your publishing contract. So anyone who's listening who is intending to, yes. um, to do that, then just... Yeah, cross cross those T's or they should be. <laughs> that is that 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 is a great one. Um, and you can even if you do work with a traditional publisher, you can request um, narrators. Like you can at least say, "I'd love to hear an audition from this person," and maybe it'll work, maybe it won't. But mm -hmm. you totally more and more like they are making room for space for the authors to they have more say in the audiobook process. So, yeah. All right. Well, once again, Ellie, how can we find you? So you can find me on my website, storiesbyellie.com, and on 
all the socials at Ellie's Voice Actor. Ellie's Voice Actor, perfect. All right, well, this was wonderful. Thank you so much, <laughs> Ellie, for joining us. Thank um, you so much. This was really fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, you worked on my book. We we exchanged emails and candies and uh, and candy. <laughs> you're, <laughs> yeah. you're a pleasure to work with and and a wonderful friend. So thank, thank you so much for being here. Um, and but yeah, absolutely. Well, thank have, you. Have, let's totally have you on again. We, we'd love to bother you again. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> no. Anytime. That this was really super fun. I love it. Thank <laughs> you so much. Yeah. All right, everyone. So don't forget to write and describe to our channels at the links below so you don't miss any of the writer's realm content. We always love for, to hear from our listeners. So if you have a question or a topic you want us to dive into, please get in touch. Until then, we will see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Great, Bye. great meeting you. Bye. Nice meeting you. <laughs>